One Sunday afternoon, Bunyan was playing Tip Cat after just hearing a sermon that morning that warned against breaking the Sabbath. During his game, he claims to have heard a voice from the heavens say, Wilt thou leave thy sins and go to heaven? Or have thy sins and go to hell? We've all heard it said that life is a journey. And so it is with our own spiritual lives. Every step in our faith journey is filled with hardships and heartache, joy and celebration, purpose and promise, until we reach our ultimate heavenly destination. Nearly 400 years ago, this journey of faith was brought to vivid life in the classic story, Pilgrim's Progress. In this month in history, August 31st, 1688, English author and pastor John Bunyan, perhaps one of the most influential writers who ever lived, completed his own spiritual journey, passing from this life to the next. Not much is known about Bunyan's early life, not even the date of his birth. But as he would probably agree, his real birth happened the day he received Christ, November 1628. Though widely celebrated as one of the most influential Christian writers who ever lived, Bunyan spent many years in jail for committing religious crimes against the church. During this time, he wrote a spiritual autobiography, Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners, and began to work on one of the world's most famous books, The Pilgrim's Progress. John Bunyan was the son of a traveling metal worker in England's agricultural Midlands. Bunyan's imagination was formed in his early days by popular adventure tales. His family were members of the Anglican Church, but he became familiar with the literature of the Puritans as well. Bunyan spent a particularly large amount of time in the Bible, specifically the authorized version by King James. In Bunyan's autobiography, he mentions dealing with troubling nightmares on a regular basis. His dreams were likely caused by his extreme sense of guilt that he carried. He even describes himself in childhood as being the very ringleader of all that kept me company into all manner of vice and ungodliness. In 1644, his mother and younger sister died. The English civil wars were in full swing and Bunyan found himself enlisted in the parliamentary army, fighting against the royalists, those upholding the English monarchy. His time in the army did not last long, but Bunyan did experience an event that he later describes in his autobiography as evidence of the grace of God. When I was a soldier, I with others were drawn out to go to such a place to besiege it. But when I was just ready to go, one of the company desired to go in my room, to which when I had consented, he took my place. And coming to the siege, as he stood sentinel, he was shot into the head with a musket bullet and died. Within two years of leaving the army, Bunyan married. Married life was hard for the young couple. Bunyan said in his autobiography that the couple had very little, not having so much household stuff as a dish or a spoon betwixt us both. The couple's first daughter, Mary, was born in 1650 and soon became blind. They would have three more children, Elizabeth, Thomas, and John. From his youth well into adulthood, Bunyan enjoyed playing games and dancing. He particularly liked a game called Tip Cat, which involved hitting a small piece of wood with a bat. He often played on Sunday, which was forbidden by the Puritans, who held that the Sabbath was only for concentrating on the Lord. No work or leisure activities were allowed. The Puritans were in protest against the Anglican Church, or the Church of England, the official state church of the monarchy. The Puritans rejected the elaborate rituals, decoration, and hierarchy of the Anglican Church, which they considered too similar to the Roman Catholic Church. The Puritans sought to simplify religious practice and abandon traditions that were not grounded in Scripture. The term Puritan was originally an insult hurled at them by Anglicans who accused them of being too easily offended by Anglican practices and sought to purify the church of its evils. Puritans did not use the term to refer to themselves primarily using saints instead. One Sunday afternoon, Bunyan was playing Tip Cat after just hearing a sermon that morning that warned against breaking the Sabbath. During his game, he claims to have heard a voice from the heavens say, Wilt thou leave thy sins and go to heaven, or have thy sins and go to hell?
The next few years were a time of intense spiritual conflict for Bunyan. He struggled with his doubts and fear over religion and guilt over what he saw as his state of sin. Bunyan knew in his heart he was a sinner, but he also viewed the current state of the church as flawed, lacking a perfect representation of the Christ that they preached. He wasn't the only person who had reservations about the church as a whole, considering that entire wars were being fought on the subject. Bunyan was making ends meet as a traveling handyman, repairing pots and pans. While he was in Bedford, he overheard a group of women speaking on spiritual matters outside their home. The women were a few of the founding members of the Bedford Protestant Church. Bunyan was so impressed by their conversation that he joined their church. Members of the congregation began to insist on Bunyan leading sermons, and so giving in, he began to preach, not only at the church, but at small groups in the surrounding areas as well. In 1658, Bunyan's wife died leaving him with four small children, one of them blind. Though he was married one year later, this period of his life was marked by agonizing spiritual despair for several years. He was a tormented soul. He heard voices. In fact, according to Bunyan, these voices urged him to blaspheme the scriptures, which led to a large amount of spiritual guilt and a spiral of depression. But Bunyan overcame. Over time, he began to feel a release from the burden of sin. He saw the merits of grace and understood that the text of the Bible offered more than guilt and terror. The words of Scripture could bring life, joy, and peace. The English civil wars had failed to permanently overthrow the monarchy, and with it, the religious persecution of the state-controlled church. With the restoration of the monarchy in 1660, Bunyan's ability to preach would be severely limited. In November 1660, Bunyan was warned of a warrant out for his arrest. He received the news while preaching. Bunyan chose not to evade capture. He was arrested and brought before Sir Francis Wingate, the local magistrate. Under the Conventicle Act of 1593, he was charged with attending a religious gathering in excess of five non-family members, not officially sanctioned by the Church of England. The offense was punishable by three months in prison and then banishment or execution if the person failed to give a commitment not to reoffend. In practice, the act was used rarely, but some speculate that Bunyan's arrest was probably due to the fear that Bunyan's meetings were a guise for secret plots to overthrow the king, which was not the case. So he was thrown in jail. In prison, Bunyan had two books, a Bible and John Fox's Book of Martyrs. It was in prison that Bunyan wrote his two famous works, Grace Abounding and The Pilgrim's Progress. The Hero of Pilgrim's Progress is an allegory about a young man named Christian navigating the pathway to the celestial city symbolizing heaven. The man therefore read it, and looking upon Evangelist very carefully said, Whither must I fly? Then said Evangelist, Do you see yonder wicked gate? The man said, No. Then said the other, Do you see yonder shining light? He said, I, I think I do. Then said Evangelist, Keep that light in your eye, and go up directly there too. So shalt thou see the gate, at which when thou knockest, it shall be told thee what thou shalt do. So I saw in my dream that the man began to run. Now he had not run far from his own door, when his wife and children, perceiving it, began to cry after him to return. But the man put his fingers in his ears and ran on, crying, Life! Life! Eternal life! So he looked not behind him, but fled towards the middle of the plain. Many of the aspects of the main character's journey of faith came from Bunyan's own personal experience. His faith journey was a lonely one. Bunyan carried the burden of his spirituality alone. Haunted by the knowledge of his sin, he was prepared to make any sacrifice necessary to continue his pursuit of salvation. Bunyan gives his main character a wonderful victory when he encounters the cross, finally releasing him 
of his heavy, sinful burden. He ran thus till he came to a place somewhat ascending, and upon that place stood a cross, and a little below in the bottom a tomb. So I saw in my dream that just as Christian came up with the cross, his burden loosed from off his shoulders and fell from off his back, and began to tumble, and so continued to do till it came to the mouth of the tomb, where it fell in, and I saw it no more. Then was Christian glad and lightsome, and said with a merry heart, He hath given me rest by his sorrow, and life by his death. Then he stood still a while, to look and wonder, for it was very surprising to him that the sight of the cross should thus ease him of his burden. While he was still in prison, the congregation of the Bedford Church voted to make Bunyan their pastor. Religious tolerance was increasing throughout the nation, and by March of 1672, the king issued a pardon for anyone charged with rebelling against the Anglican Church. Thousands of Protestants were released from prison amongst them, Bunyan and five of his fellow inmates. Following his release from jail in 1672, Bunyan devoted his time to writing and preaching. He continued as pastor of the Bedford meeting and traveled over adjoining counties on horseback to preach, becoming known affectionately as Bishop Bunyan. The Pilgrim's Progress was published in 1678 by Nathaniel Ponder and immediately became a bestseller. In 1688, on his way to London to preach, Bunyan traveled through a storm and caught a fever. He died this month in history on August 31st, 1688. John Bunyan left behind two of the most influential Christian books in history, Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners and The Pilgrim's Progress. He was able to capture his own pain and turn it into a work of art. The great beauty of John Bunyan's life is like the main character in Pilgrim's Progress, he persevered. Today, we can look back on his life and find the inspiration to persevere in our own spiritual journeys. For the rest of history, John Bunyan will be considered in the pantheon of the world's greatest authors.